Hey guys, how's it going? Valk here. So, with last night's stream from the official Epic 7 channel, uh, we now have almost all of the details on the update that's about to come. So, I'm just here to cover basically the update content as well as I think its impact on the game, especially in terms of stuff like PvP. So, with f without further ado, let's just get right into it. Um, so, since this is an anniversary patch, it's going to come with a lot of um, free stuff, which is always great for new players, um, as well as like veterans, right? Um, you know, hey, always down for some free stuff, especially with things like the frame, um, summoning tickets. Um, it's going to be a really, really good time. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to like trying out the new frame for a few days, um, stuff like that. On top of that, we'll be getting free 70 summons as soon as the new patch rolls over. So definitely looking forward to that while the maintenance is going down. On top of that, it'll also seem like we have a multiple day check-in event over a couple of uh, different weeks, uh, as well as for six-star promotions. So that's going to be pretty exciting as well. Um, it's going to help a lot of uh, newer players, as well as even veterans, where if you're kind of stuck in terms of not having the Phantasmas or the Docs to promote... Um, these units uh, this check-in event should definitely help out a lot especially since we're in a time where uh, the new meta is swapping over uh, and there's going to be a lot of meta changes especially with the new buffs and new frenzy changes which, which I'll cover in a bit um, so n being able to just get a lot of free resources to raise new units is going to be helping out a lot and I would definitely say the capstone of this event is the Moonlight 5 Star Hero Recruitment. Gacha games don't really do this a whole lot. Uh, so usually when a gacha game does this, you will most likely think like, oh no, the game is dying. But I think in actuality, uh, for Epic 7 to be doing this, um, they kind of recognize the fact that they want to be a more competitive game. So they don't want like this hero pool disparity to be a thing, right? Uh, they want people to have all the heroes, um, but gearing is kind of where accounts differentiate in terms of specialties like speed, being super tanky, having a lot of damage uh, to play combo. So um, it's good to see that Smilegate is recognizing that. And this, I think, is a great move because it helps a lot of players catch up on hero pool, especially the essential ones. Um, if you want to see a tier list, I have a video for that. Uh, link should be on screen or down in the description below. Um, so if you need help choosing a hero... Um, I got you covered with a tier list, you know, just go top, bottom, left to right. And that way, um, no matter what, you'll have a good reference going into that. After that, we'll have the new side story with uh, Ken and Hua Young. Um, not gonna lie, she looks excellent, except now in game, she's gonna have broken legs. Ah, and finally, we have a actual gameplay update where now we'll be getting a Runka into the game. So right off the bat, looking at her passive, she's looking like essentially a Hua Young clone. Uh, she's going to be an Earth Warrior, so I don't think, you know, even though it looks like she's supposed to be fighting, uh, you know, heroes that have a lot of barriers, I don't think she's a good matchup into Hua Young, um, but it's looking like another Hua Young-like unit. Um, S3 definitely scares me a bit, uh, because not only is she giving herself attack up, um, but she's also going to be able to inflict an in extinction upon nuking somebody. And this is a scary part. That comes with penetrating target's defense by 70%. Um, but damage is only increased when hitting a target with a barrier. So the hope here is that if you're fighting something without a barrier, she actually doesn't hit super hard. She should still be able to nuke a reasonable amount because this is a 5-turn cooldown uh, going to a 4-turn cooldown. Um, but if you know, her skill kit is like botched the same way Hua Young is, where she just does way too much damage all the damn time, uh, we're going to have a real problem, uh, because they just nerfed Hua Young, and, uh, I, I really hope they don't just make Hua Young 2.0 right here, but prepare for the worst, expect the best, or something like that, I don't know, man, uh, my hope is that, you know, if she's fighting something without a barrier, she's not that great, but if she's going into a barrier, uh, she'll be amazing, and if they can execute that well, I think she'll be a solid unit. As far as her, as far as her S1 goes, I don't think it's super significant. Um, but it does have built-in sustain, which is good because I can see in a lot of matchups, like for example, if you're fighting DN, Amelia, a Meteor to Coerc, even right, these units don't start with barriers. And um, like a DJB, 
uh, she wants to be able to hold her cooldowns to just be able to super nuke uh, a target that can put up a barrier and that uh, she sort of soft checks them in that fashion. So being able to heal herself and still do okay damage off of an S1 is going to be kind of important for a bruiser with this role. As far as her our artifact goes, um, I don't think it's super huge, but what I do see is that it increases attack of all allies by 5%. So what that means is now if you want to, uh, this makes for a pretty good support artifact. So in lieu of a Warhorn, uh, on units like uh, Concrete Lilius or Mediator Co-Work, um, now you can run something like this. And I would even imagine this is okay on Mediator Co-Work if you don't have a Warhorn. Uh, because the extra hit chance is going to come in really handy uh, for stripping these pesky evasion units like Remnant Violet or Closer Charles. Where uh, if you can strip the evasion, boom, suddenly you have a really good matchup. And the increased attack of all allies is actually quite significant. Uh, it might not seem like much off the bat, but this, what this changes is the final number. So, for example, if your, you know, Arunka, right, is sitting at, like, 5,000 attack um, post all of her bonus attack and everything, this will give a 5% bonus on top of that, so it'll give, like, uh, uh, 250 attack on top. So it's really nice, and this comes before the attack buff. So when you put on the attack buff with your Meteor co work or put on the Vigor with your Conqueror Lilius, uh, it's going to present a lot of value, especially in conjunction with their team attack imprint. So I don't think it's an amazing artifact, um, but I do think it's very interesting because a lot of warriors are support units now, and this will definitely work with them. After that is the E7WC shoe skin uh, from Phantom. Uh, you can see a lot of cat motifs as this is modeled after uh, Phantom's cat. Uh, I mean, it's cool. I like shoe. Cool, cute skin, right? Uh, only a shame about it is if my boy Jinte won, we would have had a dog Alencia skin, man. That's a real loss right there. That's all I'll say. Uh, after that, new equipment set. So we're getting protection set and torrent set. Now we're getting something for slower players and something for cleave players, right? Uh, you know, a little bit of new toys for both sides. Uh, as far as protection set goes, I imagine it's going to be something that's pretty viable when it comes to units such as uh, Eaton, Crimson Armin, Blue Crow, and Yulha. So it's these slower units that don't exactly have a best-in-slot um, armor set. Um, this way, uh, these knights will be able to protect your team from units like Lua and Fairy Tail Tenebria on top of that. Uh, if you just stack a lot of HP on these units, especially something like an Eaton, you're going to be able to uh, mitigate a lot of damage versus cleave and especially aggro teams. And if you guys weren't playing like competitive PvP when he was a huge unit, Blue Kraut, right? And so by extension, Yulha as well. These units thrive off of their allies having more HP for them to absorb with Aureus. So I actually think it's going to be great on them. But because this is going to be dropped in Golem Hunt, um, and it's hugely diluted by low value sets such as like attack set, and not a lot of units really favor defense set. HP set is kind of better in most cases. Um, so I don't think this is something you would farm for a lot for. It's just um, you try to collect free gears that have it over time, and maybe once in a while you throw in a conversion to try to fish out some good pieces, right? That way uh, you have one to two good protection sets that you can keep in your back pocket. As far as Torrent set goes, um, it's not really as broken as people think. Um, just because when you're going a Torrent set, uh, you're, you kind of need it to be high rolled, right? Because uh, you're losing out 20 gear score by not using a crit chance set. Uh, so, you know, seeing some of the math being done, uh, it vaguely equates to, uh, for example, the premier unit people are talking about is Commander Pavel. And, and it's roughly about... 600 extra damage per unit on his S2 and about close to a thousand damage on his S3. Uh, Commander Pavel's one of those units that are going to kill people anyway, uh, but I do think the real value of a Torrin set comes from when you start trying to run Torrin set uh, on cleave units that can afford to go a little bit slower now, right? Um, another one I can think of is Ida uh, because a lot of um, CR push now don't require uh, Ida to be really fast. 
so she can kind of be pushed in a slightly slower way, and if you put Destruction set plus Torrent set on something like an Ida, and you still have decent speed, right? I'm thinking 180, 190, maybe even 200. I think Ida could go really, really crazy once again. Uh, another huge change coming to PvE, uh, PvP is that they're decreasing dual attack chance passively from 5% to 3%, but increasing the cap from 20% to 30%. So what this does is a lot of RTA, a lot less RTA games are going to be decided by that stupid random dual attack, um, you know, coming from out your opponent like deep in Frenzy 5, deep in Frenzy 6, and you're less likely when playing against Lionheart Sermia to just ding her with the dual attack from your, from your healer, and then suddenly, boom, she's activated and she's just going to kill you now. Uh, but increasing the cap means... Now, a lot of uh, team comps, especially PvE comps, right, that rely on dual attack are just going to be a, a lot more manageable, right? You have a lot of things like Infinity Basket, Rosa Hargana, uh, as well as um, Nightmare for Crimson Moon. Like, these artifacts are just going to be slightly more value uh, when you're playing PvE. And to compensate, a Unity set has been buffed to be double its value. Um... I don't, still don't think this is something you go out of way to farm for. Well, but if you have a really good set, <laughs> you already know. So another huge change we're getting is to the Frenzy system in World Arena. Uh, I know we were talking about this for a while, right? We were expecting Soul Weaver plus 7 speed to go away. Uh, but instead, we're getting Mage 7 speed. Now this is a huge, huge, huge change. Uh, so what this is going to do is... Uh, now, a lot of top tier soul weavers like Dien, Amelia, and even by, you know, by proxy Destina loses quite a bit of value. I, I imagine Dien takes a huge hit from this because with plus seven speed, uh, Dien reasonably can race a lot of units like C. Lilius and, uh, you know, if you have really good gear, a uh, Lua, right? Um, but without the extra seven speed in RTA, especially with this going onto mages, and this is going to be a huge problem uh, for people who are used to playing this meta, such as myself, because now, um, mage. Mages are a lot more viable across the board than Soul Weavers, right? This is going to enable a lot of fast mages people aren't going to be expecting. AOL, uh, Fairy Tail Tenebria, uh, Solitaria, Fire Coerg, Top Model Luka are all going to gain a lot of ridiculous speed, um, and they're just going to be able to wreak havoc on the meta. So uh, this is going to be a very aggressive meta. Usually, I would say this frenzy change stays for about two seasons. So I would say for the next uh, three to six months or so, right, depending on whether or not this sticks, um, we're going to see a lot more aggressive matches. Um, on top of that, uh, Battle Frenzy ramping from stage to stage just went from eight turns to seven. So instead of both players, you know, taking a full round of turns, now we're at seven. Uh, what this means is it's going to, the games are going to go a little bit faster and we're going to ramp up, um, Frenzy just a little bit quicker, which means damage is maybe a little bit more important and bulk, right, and sustain just kind of lose out a little bit of power. So th for the next two seasons are looking to be really aggressive if these changes stick. My only point of criticism to this is why aren't we getting these changes in the preseason, you know? I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm trying to understand their perspective on why we're not testing these frenzy changes in the preseason. Because the first time something came out like um, uh, the CR gain on kill, right, when, when they wanted to test that system... Uh, they tested it, we hated it. It was there for a week, and then boom, it was immediately gone. Uh, I want to say Mage in increase by 7 speed is just as impactful, if not more. And it's not one of those changes where you just, yeah, let's just put it in at the beginning of season and see people like it. Like, definitely, Smilegate, if you're listening, test this in the preseason, see if people like it. Chances are not, you know, uh, so we still have time to fix this. So, you know, l let us know, keep the community in the loop. After that, looks like we got some UI changes, Labyrinth improvements. I think the Labyrinth improvements are actually quite significant because it looks like we are getting um, a lot better level 88 gear. So, just based on the screenshots, uh, some of these gear look really, really, really nice. Um, like, perfect max roll, and uh, it, it looks like, you know, you got the right set of right substats, and it looks like there's almost no wasted stats. So if these are what we are getting, and these do indeed be renewable, right? Um, like you can farm them once every month. Um, you know, the, the caveat they said with this game mode, with the new Labyrinth is that 
there's going to be new difficulties and if you clear it with one team all of those units cannot be used right and um, people were kind of like a little bit wary about that because now to clear a full labyrinth run you're gonna need like 25 units that's pretty scary and i agree but if the rewards are going to be this good um, I think it's worth a lot of people's trouble to start developing more options as far as PvE goes, um, ways to use budget units to deal with the bosses without having to stretch out your high quality gear. And I think the return is absolutely worth it. Uh, on top of that, we'll be getting a lot of uh, difficulty reduction across the entire world in terms of story, as well as uh, difficulty reduction to episode 2, stuff like that. This is going to help new players catch up, which I think is excellent. Beyond that, we are also getting balance adjustments uh, to the following heroes. Uh, Huayang's getting nerfed, and everybody else is getting buffed. And uh, this is going to change the game up quite a bit, um, because I think some of these units were already looking to be pretty good. Uh, for example, Pirate Captain Flan, I think, has been in a pretty okay spot, and the new slew of buffs definitely takes her into uh, what I would consider to be pretty strong. Uh, but, I think, Top Model Lulica kind of stole the show, because now, on top of all of the changes, we also have got the news that Mages will be receiving plus 7 speed, which I think is really, really important to Top Model Lulica uh, for the upcoming season. Now, if you want to see me cover all of these changes, uh, I have a video for that as well. And that should be either on screen or in the description down below. And if you want to see me play any of these heroes, I stream RTA six day a week at twitch.tv slash After that, there is going to be a custom group summon, which I think is almost always one of the most important ways to get limited heroes in Epic 7. Uh, as you guys can see, there are usually a really good amount of limited heroes that make a pretty hefty meta impact. DM was really important for two seasons. Uh, Landy has almost always been pretty important, but fell off a little bit. Uh, Fairy Tilt Tenebria um, on screen kind of peters in, peters out, peters in, peters out. So uh, definitely have to see how she kind of gets worked into the meta at any point. Uh, but what's really important is just because of the amount of rangers in the game, right? The Guiding Light Artifact on Cerise Banner is going to be a huge chase prize, and that's going to be something I know a lot of players, myself included, are going to be summoning for. So definitely keep your eyes peeled for that, and for new players, this is never a bad thing, as it's going to be able to help you guys catch up in terms of unit pool. If you don't have like super useful units like Tamara and Roana, um, definitely try to pick some of those up right for both PvE and a little bit of PvP. And that's something I might make a video for somewhere down the future. Uh, let me know in the comments if that's something you guys might be into. Uh, beyond that, we just have some banner news. Uh, there will be a Cecilia banner. Huayang banner. That's, uh, what can I say, man? That's unfortunate. Uh, Arunka banner coming up after that. And she will be in right around the 4th anniversary. So that will be kind of cool. Uh, after that, it seems like we'll be having two Mystic Rotations, uh, which will be Strays and Ruel, and Spectre Tenebra and Closer Charles. So this is also something I'm in huge support of, right? Granted, we don't get a lot of free-to-play Mystic resources, um, but if you know what you're doing and you know what you're aiming for, what your goal is, and what you want, I think this is a really good way for newer accounts to catch up to older accounts in terms of hero pool, especially the important ones. And it seems like they've increased the capacity for Coin Shop as well, uh, instead of two heroes per rotation, we're now getting three. So it, it's really good to see that Smilegate is recognizing Epic 7 is a game that um, you kind of need the hero pool to play a lot of content. So good to see them trying to make changes um, basically to cover that. Ah, and one thing I almost forgot is the Seal of Capture from the new side story. So this artifact is going to be a five star free artifact that's Rangers only. Um, it might look a little puzzling as to why we're getting this. But, um, so the thing to take note here is because of the Pirate Captain Flam buff, uh, she is going to need a art- well, she, she's going to scale best with an artifact that, uh, doesn't- requires her to not crit, right? And, uh, you know, either drops burns or bombs. Now, usually I would say the best in slot for Pirate Captain Flan is start of the Deep Sea, Summertime Isarius artifact. But, because that's a limited artifact and people are going to say, hey- you know, why did you buff this hero and she's going to basically be, like, glued to a limited artifact? That's a cringe cash game. 
Well, Smilegate is going to give everybody a free artifact that Pirate Captain Flan can use. Um, now, some more people might say, oh, well, this is just a slightly downgraded version of uh, Star of the Deep Sea. But hey, there's a caveat. Star of the Deep Sea only works on caster's own turn, right? Which means you want to be playing like speed set Pirate Captain Flan when you're playing Star. But when you're playing Seal of Capture, this doesn't require for caster to be on their own turn. And the, there's no like turn limit trigger. So that means she's going to be better with us as artifact if she's going to be on counter set as well as better synergy with units such as Adventurer Ross and Conqueror Lilius. So overall, I would say that's not a bad trade-off, and especially if you don't have spare copies of Star of the Deep Sea, this is a pretty okay replacement, I would say. Alright, so with that being said, I think that's everything to cover with this patch. Um, I'm super excited for Epic 7's 4th anniversary. Uh, I do think this patch shakes up the meta a little bit too much for my liking, but hey, you know, I'm just play the game. I'm a huge enjoyer of the game. Every time it comes up, like, I'm just going to play and stream the game. And, you know, it is what it is. And uh, I'm here to write it out and see how the meta changes. So pretty excited to see that. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, let me know if you guys have any questions as well or see something I missed. Either way, I appreciate you guys' time. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, don't forget to leave me a like and a subscribe. Uh, it will help me out a lot. Uh, so, yeah, that'll be it for this video. I hope to see you guys in the next one. Hope you guys stay safe. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next time. See ya, see ya.